I'm Brad King, and this is Stories in Steel. On this episode of Stories in Steel, we sit down with the super talented Mitch Kim. Being known as the guy who pulls really fine lines, he talks about how he aspired to get there and how he's always strived to be the best. We discuss his dislike of lettering big rigs and what's involved in pulling nice stripes on even nicer skin. We finish talking about his last goal of retirement and wanting to drive off into the sunset in one of his own hot rods. You definitely want to watch this. It's a nice, nice August afternoon in, uh, in Clackamas, Oregon. <laughs> and... Uh, the people around here call it cracking my ass, Oregon. Cracking my ass, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I've wanted to talk to you for a long time. I was I was a huge fan of yours when I was about eighteen years old. Oh and I really started doing it seriously, and uh, you know everybody kind of has their has their people, and you were one of my three. And it's it's wow. sad that it took me so long to That's, get to meet you. You know, because I I fell pretty flattering <laughs> for a long time. But, uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you and just and kind of get to know you a little bit. So, so how so, did you, how did you get exposed to my striping? I mean, uh, I was, just, at, I was at a hot, I was at a hot rod run. I was at a oh, rod okay. run. I don't even, I don't even remember. I think it was in Kenwick. I think the first one I went oh, to was okay. in Kenwick. Okay. And, or Pasco or somewhere, it was somewhere around there. Yeah. One of the Tri-Cities areas. And, uh, and I was there and I, I hadn't seen a bunch of these cars and it's like, did this like who's this Mitch Kim guy? And I was said I was like eighteen, so it was it was like eighty one. I think it was yeah, I think it was around yeah, eighty one, maybe yeah. eighty two. And uh, it's like I, I just this is what I want to do. And I I took photos and and analyzed it and tried oh, to figure wow. out what you were doing. <laughs> That's and, awesome. And because uh, this is what I wanted to do with myself. And and now I get to I get to talk to you about what yeah. you do, which has been great. I've had a good afternoon just learning a little bit about you and. And uh, checking out checking out your work, and it's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, let, yeah, let's so fun. let's talk about you. So, what? Okay. Uh, and it's always like the same old thing. I always ask for the same question. You know, what what got you into this? But it's kind of the, the same deal. I mean, what what made you want to do what you do? What where you did know? It start? When I was a pre grade school, I was always drawing cars, and showed a lot of artistic ability. So my folks enrolled me into uh, the Portland Art Museum. So this was back in grade school. And so I was doing uh, uh, pen and ink, charcoal drawings, learning to do uh, carvings, uh, sculpture, everything. But I just had the love for car stuff. So, I mean, that really didn't do anything for me. And then I took art classes all through, well, all through grade school, high school, one year of college of art. and. Uh, it helps, but my love was always for cars. And then during high school, when you go to the drag races and you're seeing all the funny cars that are gold leaf lettered, striped, airbrushed, oh, that just turned me on. So you start asking questions, well, who does this? So everybody says, you gotta go talk to so-and-so, he's a sign painter. And so uh, gradually I just started talking to uh, sign painters and uh, just learning a little bit more about brushes, what to buy paints and then during high school I did buy some brushes and some paints and was just kind of screwing around with it and then um, I got to watch Gary Chris pinstripe a dash and that's what that's what where it all started that's, that's what took you over the top that was uh -huh. that was the beginning of the end right yeah. there yeah and it was just like watching magic and then so I got to know him a little bit more so how okay? So how old were you when when that happened? This was um, during. This is around 1970. So I was. Uh, how old was I? 21. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, so I just started practicing. I mean, he showed me kind of what to do, and I just started practicing, and then. Um, I started going around Portland to all the sign shops because I wanted to learn how to paint signs too. Mostly, that's I actually started doing that first and just practicing pinstriping on the side. So I finally got a job in a sign shop. I told the owner that I would work for him for free for several months if he would teach me. I would do whatever he wanted me to do and he didn't have to pay me. 
And uh, so I worked there for two years. I finally started getting a small check after about a year. Right <laughs> really, on. Really, really dumb. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to learn so bad. But you, you, you go back, you wouldn't change anything no. because you learned. No. And he probably was more than happy to and tell he you was, because he didn't have to spend money to train you. He could just show you uh -huh. and it was on your dime. Yeah. And what was really good, it was a show card shop. So, oh, wow. um, so basically, it was a lot of watercolors with uh, sable brushes. Um, he would do uh, show cards for all the uh, nightclubs, stores, uh, uh, circle banners, everything that it took just to do with watercolor paints. And then he did show me uh, enamels uh, with quills and stuff too. So uh, that's basically where I learned how to paint signs, was working for him. And I, I broke the old guy's heart. Um, he wanted me to buy the shop. He wanted me to take over. And I didn't want to sit at a bench painting signs the rest of my life. I kind of wanted to get into cars, doing cars, more truck lettering, maybe striping. So I did quit him. I broke his heart. And I went to work for Gary Crisp. He had a truck painting shop. Gary wanted me to letter signs for all the trucks. 45 foot trailers, diesels, whatever. So I ended up working for Gary for two years. Oh boy, I paid my dues that way. Greasy, dirty, dark shops, lettering 45 foot trailers, corrugated sides. Oh, I mean, I paid my dues doing that and uh, truck doors. So I did that for two years and then I was striping cars. Um, I had bought a house at that time and uh, was striping in a little uh, two car garage at night. I'd be working, gosh, from eight in the morning till two o'clock in the next morning, every day, every day, seven days a week. I mean, I loved it that much. Right. And so um, as time went on, Gary introduced me to Bob Kovacs down in California. So I flew down there, rented a car, went to Bob's house and he just was just took me right in like Gary told told him all about me, took me right in. And uh, I stayed with Bob for a weekend watching him pinstripe. And that just changed my life again. <laughs> watching the Fresno style. OK, so um, so we did that for several years. I'd go down there and I actually help him work. I'd stripe along right with him and help him do signs and. So you're like in your 20s when you're doing this or mm -hmm. were you? It was in my, yeah, it was all through my 20s. Okay. And this was during my late 20s, during the time I was with Bob. And uh, I went down there quite a bit. I was going down there about every, once every three months. So him. to backtrack for just a second, did the sign guy you're working for, did he ever see what you became? Did he ever see? No, he ended up, he ended up selling the shop to another sign painter. And I really never saw Gene again. Um, apparently he had died a few years after that because he was pretty getting up there. So no, it was, I think I feel been, really bad. I think you'd have been pretty proud of you though. I mean, you, yeah. everybody kind of wants to go their own way. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way it is. You're, you're, I, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of hiring your own assassin. That's even, usually the way it works. Even to this day though, I still feel bad. Because I really broke his heart. I I think he'd you know? I think he'd be proud of you though. If he saw yeah. what you'd become, he I think he'd be all right. I understand. I, I and get we it. got along awesome. There was no there was no fighting, no yelling. I mean, it was just an awesome teacher. So after that, um, Bob and I we were in, went around Fresno, and he was introducing me to all the other pinstripers down there: uh, Neil Averro, Dick De Benedictus, Glenn Soggy, uh, all those guys, and. They all had that similar style of fine lines, color bands with fine lines. Oh, God, it was just beauty. So, so I kind of brought that style up here to Portland and uh, just tried to make it my own, changed it up a bit. And, and you did. You, you yeah. kind of took off. Made it. Uh -huh. So when did the striping? I mean, obviously, OK, so, okay, let's go back. You started at a sign shop. So that's that was where mm -hmm. that was the direction you went. Mm -hmm. When did the pinstriping become? Actually, part OK, of the sign this, thing? this is kind of funny because uh, when I was lettering trucks for Gary at the truck shop, 
he actually forced me into the striping. He was scheduling cars to come in. He said, you got to stripe this car. Uh, the first thing that he scheduled in was a CJ Jeep. And he said, stripe it. You just got to get it done. I told the customer that you'd do it. You got to get it done. So I was actually kind of forced into it. <laughs> That's funny. And, and striping was pretty hard. I mean, it was hard. So um, I just kept practicing and practicing. Um, you know, during the late 70s, as I was making trips to California, I would actually stop at different sign shops and actually look at their work. And uh, that's how I wanted to improve myself, is just to kind of focus on everybody else's work and try and be better than what was going on. So I just, I kept at it. I wanted my work perfection. I didn't want to be just another striper. I mean, just how you end your lines at door jams, um, your points, your square ends, that's so important to keep them square and not, you know, oh, no, funky, absolutely. overlapping. It's, it's really important because the end result is so much better. So, and straight, straight lines. That was really important to me. And audience, I don't, I don't recommend this for, to do for a living. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> and it's hard on your body. It's hard emotionally. Your back, your knees, they take a toll, but, but it's really rewarding. So you, so you did that first car for Gary. Gary goes, let's do mm -hmm. this car. So mm -hmm. did it come out okay? I mean, was it would, it, no, 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 it was, you know, you do more wiping than, and I'm so anal and such a perfectionist that I'm wiping more than I'm striping. And you just, you just, but you just stay at it till, till you kind of like it. Um, it's tough. So, but that's how you learn. So, okay, so you got that out of the way. So now fast forward, you're in your 30s and you went, okay, I, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going yeah. to do this. Yeah, so I bought another house. So um, with a big shop, I converted that to my business. So I striped out of my house for probably 11 years. And then I had, there was no peace at home. So, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, you're inundated with people constantly, every day, seven days a week. I had people showing up on Sunday evenings just for me to look at their cars. And this just went on constantly, seven days a week. So I ended up getting a shop, uh, working out of a, a warehouse for a couple years. That didn't work. And then, um, then I ended up getting this shop. I've been here for 30 years. So um, it's been working out really good. People don't know where I live. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. That's came by your shop. You weren't there. Yeah. No, I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's perfect. Uh, but anyway, so if I retire, I don't know if I'd ever work back at home again. I don't know if I could do that. Okay. So let's, let's kind of step forward here of, 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 of how, how it kept transitioning. So you do gold leaf work. I don't know if you're doing gold leaf and you're doing signs. Oh yeah, or did you, I was. Um, so are you doing that with sign work then? Uh huh. All okay. through um, all through the late seventies and all through the eighties, I had the accounts to do uh, the whole city of Portland's fire trucks, city of Gresham's fire trucks, Washington County, oh, Clark County. Wow. I was doing them all, all of them. But it sounds like a lot, but in reality. Every time they bought a new truck, they want me to come out and go leaf letter it, stripe it. I was only maybe doing one truck from all these counties and cities. I was only doing maybe, uh, maybe one truck every three months. So it's really, you know, they keep these trucks quite a long time. I did several uh, antique steamers. Um, I did one for the San Francisco Museum, Alaska Museum, Portland's Museum. Oh, uh, geez, I was, I did quite a few old ones, yeah. Um, 20s, fire trucks. There's a chief in Clark County up in Vancouver, he restores trucks, and so I was doing every one of them. And they were all from late 1800s, or late, no, early 1900s, clear through the 40s. Yeah. That's good because then you're then you're fine tuning your craft because it's just lines and lines. And I lines did a and... I did a horse drawn steamer for the city of Portland. It was my first one, 
And, oh, I hated that job. I just hated it. Because the glue, the sizing, I was buying a batch of sizing that wouldn't dry. If, say, like if the sizing had to be set up within a couple hours before you can put the leaf on, it would still be too sticky. So I would actually go home and come back in the middle of the night and it'd still be too sticky. I mean, I wasn't getting any sleep doing this truck. Right. And then at the end, because I had to actually give a bid on this truck before I even started. I probably made a dollar an hour on this job. (laughs) It's just gross. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. But. So you've done, you've done lots of fire trucks. Any, yeah. Anything anything else like that? I mean, that's kind of a a rigid set thing. It's not there's not a lot of leeway. It's all kind of no. set. I mean, you safes and and that kind right. of right. Yeah, stuff lots that, of safes, and you got to do a lot of research on the the original type scroll work. And it's amazing that when you research how these trucks were originally done, there's several guys doing these trucks. The style would actually change. Like, like on an old steamer, um, the way the pumps are striped as opposed to the way the frame rails are striped, is com- they're completely different. You can tell a different person did it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of there's probably at least four or five guys working on the same fire truck. So, so when, I, when I saw your stuff, it was in the 80s. It was, it, was, it, was, it was like 81 or 82, and you were doing a lot of hot rods. There was a yeah, lot I, I of did. cars that had your name a lot. It wasn't just a couple. Half the show, I think, was was Mitch yeah. Kim Pinstriped. Yeah, because I was um, making trips up to Seattle quite a bit. Um, plus the cars down here. I was a working workaholic. I mean, this I just I loved every minute of it, um, and I just wanted to be better. Just, I just, I want it to be the best, but that's impossible. No matter how good you are, there's always somebody better. Well, but see, as long as you're striving for it, see, that's the attitude. You're Mm -hmm. always striving for perfection. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always somebody else also striving for perfection. It's it's not like this one guy. You're you're always looking for that edge. How can it be better than this next guy? Yeah, there's so many good artists out there. It's just incredible. It's insane how many talented people are out there. Yeah. But you've inspired a lot of them. I, well, I guarantee I, I, you've been in the middle of it. Well, that's, I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. But I hope so. Um, it's a hard business, like I say. So what what are some of the cool things you've worked on? I mean, what is something that jumps out at you that you go, that um, was a lot of fun, or this was just an insane amount of work, and it went backwards on um, I don't enjoy lettering as much as I do striping. And so the race cars... Um, it's kind of a drudgery, especially when you're when there's lots of lettering. Um, the historic race cars um, were they supply with pictures on how the old lettering was. Duplicating all that that's that's even harder. Um, you're duplicating sign painter styles that were done back in the '60s, '70s that pretty crude, and you have to copy that. Um, but I'd say. It's, Basically, striping hot rods is what I like doing, uh, more so than stock cars, crew cabs, SUVs, motorcycles. <laughs> I actually like doing hot rods, especially when they're bringing them from everywhere, from Canada and Montana and Idaho and Seattle. <laughs> so I feel I feel pretty fortunate. Right. I'm not out for fame. I just you just kind of do what you do and just. Just do the best you can. Well, that's how you get your name out there. Your name's going to get out regardless. If yeah. you're always striving for perfection, it's how is it not going to get out there? Yeah. So you've been that's doing sweet. this. You've been doing this for a while now. How, how old um, are you? I am 72. I've been doing it almost 50 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Long time. Been a long time. I've got three degenerated vertebrae. Prove it. <laughs> Well, you have uh, you, you have you know kind of your claim to fame. You got some magazine stuff. Yeah. You you well, have the infamous the infamous picture that you're you're famous for you know for striping, for striping some human anatomy. Yeah. That, uh, you know, you were explaining. It sounded like it was more work than fun. I mean, oh, it's, like just it's a incredible. A lot of work. Have you ever tried striping on skin? I haven't done that. Oh I, I, gosh. I kind of did a little bit a long time ago, but it wasn't. It was like. 
I didn't know if I wanted to put one shot on somebody. It's like, man, this I, is paint, paint, paint. I tested you know, the girls first. I, I put, especially on sensitive, like their, like, um, like their forearms. It's real sensitive skin. So I put turpentine on. You wait a while, see if there's any redness. Um, I'll, I'll put some one shot on their skin. And then I bought um, a skin protectant cream called Travabon. And it's, it's a cream that mechanics use to, to kind of protect their hands. So I had the girls cover their skin. It's like, it's like suntan lotion. So when it dries, and actually what it did, it, it stopped the paint from actually uh, uh, absorbing into the skin. Because normally on skin, once you put that paint on, the little, the little pores and veins just start absorbing and then actually the paint will spread. It'll widen. Right. So when you look at these pictures up close, magnifying glass, you can see that the paint still was spreading a little, but, but the cream helped. But you can't, you can't make a mistake. And also, too, is the skin is moving as you're pressing on it with a light touch. The skin still moves. So it's still altering the stripe. I never really thought about that. Uh-huh. Because so, you can see you can see just just how the skin's stretching. And if you're pushing with your finger, you're changing it even more. So you have to use such a feather, feather light touch on that skin in order the brush will do the work, but but you're but you gotta not press on the skin too hard. So it's hard. And then and then to stripe wet on wet using three colors. You can't let that first step dry. You got to keep going. And then you can't draw on the skin to give you any kind of a straight line or any kind of a mark because, uh, well, first of all, grease pencils or anything, it, it, you just can't draw on the skin. <laughs> I never so, thought about that. So you just have to go for it and hope it's going to be straight. You're really having to wing this whole uh -huh. thing. Yeah. Yeah, the hardest thing was the very first poster because... Um, I put that design right down the middle. And so I had to kind of imagine, just imagine a straight line between her breasts <laughs> and then kind of stress her from there. <laughs> it was tough, let me tell you. With this imaginary line here. In the giant. And they're probably giggling. Or, oh, or, yeah. Or, they, you know, they can't, they can't feel the brush at all. Um, what they feel is your fingers. Right. So... And also the travel bond, which was nice about that cream, was that as soon as the paint starts drying, it actually starts flaking off. It's not adhering to the skin. So really, mm -hmm. yeah, actually towards the end of the striping session, um, striping took about four and a half hours. Photography time was about four and a half hours. So after about nine hours, actually the paint started flaking off. Wow. Yeah. So, so I had the girls leave the paint on overnight and then just take a hot shower and it just it just fell off it was it was definitely definitely cool seeing the posters i remember when they came out like all right that's pretty cool i don't i don't know anybody else's i mean you see stuff it it, it shows around the years you know you go okay that's kind of cool never saw anybody that actually made a job out of it yeah you know, i mean full on lots of color yeah from uh -huh. a professional angle let's make this an actual striping job mm -hmm. so did you stripe the surfboard kind of the same way uh-huh yeah i actually that? did the surfboard first and just mimic the surfboard uh -huh. on, on the girl okay uh -huh. yeah the hard part too is the design is the same from from leg to leg and then it starts on her ass and then goes down her legs. That was tough because I had to do one stroke here, one stroke here, one stroke here, one stroke here, and then uh, and then start with a second color. And those were band stripes, so they're outlined. They're well, band stripes you, outlined. How did you not run your fingers through? That's the hard part. You have to concentrate on spreading your fingers so wide that you're not rubbing against that wet paint and just going off like a little finger or or two fingers holding your hands up. I mean, it's tough. <laughs> and there's nothing, there's nothing to go by. There's no drawings, nothing. You just go off the, go off whatever your mind is thinking. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hard. That's pretty crazy. I'd do it again at art. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> See, what I imagine is a black and white one. I mean, uh, just all black and white, no color. Maybe maybe sepia tones. I don't know. 
That, so that would be cool with the skin because mm-hmm. it's it's playing that same that same color mm-hmm. combination, yeah. which would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So I quit Gary after a couple of years and just kind of just just started lettering my own. And then Gary ended up getting other sign painters to do his trucks. Um, so do you still do a lot of trucks? Uh, I don't do any. I, I quit doing diesels, Peterbilt's, Kenworth's probably 20 years ago. But yeah, I just, um, after the truck deal, then yeah, I just kind of stuck with cars. And, and you still lots. do a lot of race cars? Yeah, just, yeah, when they, then they come in, yeah, I still do them. When the museum was going, our World of Speed was going, they, I did quite a few of the sprint cars out of there they were because they were doing a lot of restorations on early sprint cars and then early uh, nascars so so they hired me to i was lettering most of them good kept you busy yeah you did um but it's hard you know it's hard to and all your all you're working off is just are these little pictures you know and trying to get measurements right and placement yeah it's it's kind of tough is there uh, is there anything that you want to do still that you haven't done yet, or have you done everything you ever wanted to do? Um, yeah, retire. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to retire. Yeah, I go retire. Home. Yeah, I just want to go home. home. <laughs> yeah, just work on my truck. What's the What's the weirdest? You ever struck anything really weird? You said this is just really strange. Um, gosh, there's been a lots lots of that. Um, people bring in weirdest little toys and antique things, um, meat slicers and, um, <laughs> really? yeah, antique, um, um, gosh, uh, way, uh, let's see, um, way machines, um, just all sorts of, uh, late 1800 antiques. That's it's, and they were all originally hand striped too back then um people bring in life preservers they want lettered um just i mean holy cow or like cummings diesel motors <laughs> like that's crazy um yeah but it looks like it's gonna be kind of a kind of a showy piece all the yeah. polish stuff on there it's yeah. probably pretty cool so far. yeah I, I like what he's doing i wish the paint was a little nicer but so what what is the well you've done a lot of hot rods uh, i'm assuming you do a lot of race cars i mean mm-hmm. you got racetracks not too far from here mm-hmm. yeah um I'm funny sure. cars have done a few okay did uh, two jungle gym funny cars i did one um tiki warrior originally um kenny youngblood did the original and then i had to duplicate what he did on the second one that was tough because <laughs> he's really good New cars, it doesn't really matter. Somebody will bring you something going, just put some little lines on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe some silver leaf or some gold and leaf. But I did one Rolls Royce that won the entire, um, um, the big concourse down south. Um, oh, Pebble Beach? Pebble Beach, yeah. It won everything at Pebble Beach. Wow. Yeah. But nobody knows. Right. Nobody cares. Unless you're part of the high end group. Right, they yeah. Know. Uh-huh, yeah. They know who did it. That's why it's not a good business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but the kids, you know, kids nowadays, they still want to do something cool. They don't yeah. want to, they may not want to sit in front of a desk or they want to go out and, you know, hammer, you know, houses. Yeah, they want to do something that's, that's creative. I, I, I hope so. I just, I hope so. You know, I don't want this to go away. I know you don't want it to go away. No. It still needs to be there. And is even with newer cars being done, the younger guys, they like their wraps and hopefully someday they go, no, I want to put paint on my car. I like the paint thing. Hopefully. I've tried to teach a dozen people, two, two girls and mostly guys, but not one of them stuck it out. It's really sad because I really wanted to give my business to somebody and, and, and full on trusting them, knowing that they'll do a good job for that customer. I really wanted to do that, but it's really sad. Nobody that I can give this to. Anything left you want to do? Anything you want to check off your list before you walk away from um, this, this thing? You know what my whole desire is? Is to have fun in an old car. I've been striving for that for freaking years and I can't seem to get there. 
just to fire it up and just go drive an old car. Yeah, I mean, I've had lots of them too, but they, they end up getting sold before I can drive them. Uh, this 40 Ford pickup's just the beginning stage of building. Uh, my 32 Ford that I had, that I never, I drove it to Pleasanton once, and then I sold it. Uh, so I just, <laughs> that's my whole, much as my whole, my whole being is to have some fun in an old car and drive it a lot. <laughs> I can't and then, seem to and get then it I done. Show up, and then I show up in the old pickup. Yeah, just shoot, <laughs> makes drives me crazy. I can't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The hot rods are cool. Hot oh, are I just so freaking cool. love them. I love 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s cars. I just love them so much. Well, something makes it makes it fun when they show up. They want them striped because it's, uh, oh, I, I'm, already having, I'm already looking at the body mm -hmm. lines going, I already know what I'm going to do, and it's game on. I've striped several uh, 50s Chevy trucks. Um, not so much striping, but lettered them with the old timey signs and then you patina the signs because they're all patinaed trucks that come in. Right. <laughs> they're all on air ride. You come in the next day and all the air's leaked out. And they're just laying on the ground. Every air ride truck I've had in here is leaked air. Every single one of them. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I had plans to drive my Model 8 of uh, Hot Rodorama, but my motor broke a week before. And then I was gonna drive it down to Pleasanton uh, in August, but I don't think it's gonna be done even for them. So, another year <laughs> down the tube. Right. <laughs> and time's running out, you know? Time is running out. Every day, every day we lose a day. Well, I think we've pretty much covered your, your yeah. life and the life and times of Mitch Kim. <laughs> yeah. Which has been, it, it's That's, been eventful. It hasn't yeah. been boring. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it's been that boring. <laughs> you've, you've worked on a lot of cool projects. A bunch inspired me, so. You know what the thing is too is is that our lives are so short. I've 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 beat death four times now. I've gone through cancer twice, stage four, and and two heart attacks. So I tell you, that's I'm thinking differently now. That's why I want to have some fun in an old car. All right. So I think that's priority over anything for striping right now for me. Let's go for a drive. Get in the car and just go. Uh huh. Yeah. Noisy, rattly, yeah. leaking, gas burning hot rods. Yeah. Best kind. You know, in, in that last video that you showed me that uh, he was talking about teaching, and I had thought about that too as probably having some classes after I retire. So, um, I think it could be fun. I don't think it would be a bad thing. No. Because you're going to get, you may have, you know, say you have 20 students. There's going to be five of them that are going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like sponges going, what do I need to mm -hmm. do? You go and practice. I will practice. Can I keep in touch with you so I can show you what I'm doing? And, and you're I, going to go, yes. Right. And I've thought about it a lot. I mean, I'd supply all the brushes, the paints, everything it, it takes. All they got to do is show up. So I don't know. That's I think about it all the time. Just, I did like that sign, Gilbert. Just, I did three of those. I did three of those about 35 years ago. How did you get that one back? Um, he gave it to me. He brought it over on a flatbed and he gave it to me. I didn't want it at first. I said, Lonnie, it's too big. It's too, I don't know what to do with it. It's too big. It's too heavy. Then he closed the shop up? Uh-huh. Yeah, he sold the building and then he just completely shut the business down. Just like, They're heavy on the signs. He put uh -huh. a lot of effort in this. Yeah, he yeah. kept one for his own garage. And uh, he sold the third one. It's a work of art. But, um, yeah, I remembered. I spent weeks on those three signs. Weeks, oh, not did. days. Oh, no, there was a lot of work yeah. right there. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Yeah, Mitch. well, thank you. It was fun. It made me uh, think about my life is a loser. <laughs> <laughs> as a loser. Yeah. yeah.